Hello, welcome to part two of our Lisa Basics Guide. Reminder that this is game version 4.2. In this part, we're going to talk more about strategy and go over some basic game plan elements, which will build on the essential moves list we already went over. Also, don't forget about all the resource links I mentioned in part one. I've included those once again in the video description below. Real short, so let's get going. For newer players, you're going to be happy when I say that the core of Elise's gameplay is very simple. Stick and move and be as annoying as possible. Then capitalize on any mistakes, particularly whiffs. This of course starts with her sidewalk, which is the best in the game. This allows her to step things that no one else in the cast can. If you've never heard it before, any situation where you are at negative four disadvantage to plus four advantage is considered a gray area where many moves can still be stepped. The better spacing you have, the easier it is to step moves typically. For Elisa, her sidewalk essentially grows this gray area to negative six or negative seven, give or take. This is similar for other characters with strong side steps as well, such as Zafina. Given that Elisa also has a good back dash, this pairs well with a lot of her pokes, such as down back three, back one, forward two, one one if it doesn't get ducked, down forward four, and running three four. Nearly all of these have incredible range for what they are, but more importantly, they sit in that gray area. So mindlessly swinging into them is a huge mistake for your opponent. Her strings can act in a similar manner, given that many can give her big rewards if your opponent attacks after the first hit. Down forward one one two does almost 50 damage on normal hit. Counter hit down forward one four gives a knockdown on hit for a free follow up, and it's a safe mid. Counter hit back to four is a launcher. Counter hit one, two, four is the same, just slower. Counter hit down back to two gives a true plus 14, so you can get a free follow up if they don't drop to the ground. And even forward two has some scary string options like forward two, three, three, a 30 damage wall bouncer, which makes forward two by itself even better. Then you have the garbage strings like up four, three, two, back four, three, or back four, four, down two, four, etc. These aren't good by most measures, but it can be more for your opponent to think about. Again, the idea here is to be as annoying as possible to disrupt your opponent's timings. However, you will still largely be doing your single hit pokes and moving around to try to get a whiff. Then either you can launch with down forward two, up forward four four, or back four four. Or you can go for something quicker and get either plus frames from something like one one, or a knockdown splat from things like two four or four. It's a patient style that works incredibly well for her. These are what I like to call mini stances. They aren't anything you'll abuse, but they are useful from time to time. SBT and DBT are her jetpack stances. The difference between the two is that DBT is jetpacks with your chainsaws out, so your moves are slightly different. With SBT, the most common application is to stick with SBT2 and SBT3, which are mid and low respectively, and are both I-16 startups. SBT2 is a knockdown splatting power mid. SBT3 also does good damage, high crushes, gives big plus frames on hit, and launches on counter hit, so it's a big low threat. Both have big active windows, although SBT2's is enormous, so on block it can be negative eight all the way up to plus three. So another use is to space it for the plus frames. It can also go into DES, so those plus frames can be important. SBT3 can be spaced in a similar manner to make it as good as negative 10 on block. These variable frames simply work to make your bait game better, like we just talked about and if you want something a little quicker but less reward sbt12 is i13 only negative nine on block mid mid and a natural combo just be careful not to do sbt1 or 121 since those are both very punishable dbt3 is the same move as sbt3 so same low threat your safe mid threat here is dbt1 plus 2 it's a little faster at i12 but the i16 startup of dbt3 is fast enough that you normally still don't have to worry about opponent playing that timing defense at a certain speed it's tough to do that dbt2 is i16 but probably not worth it given that it's negative 12 and gives you less than 40 damage in return sometimes you'll see dbt1 since it's plus nine on block and has six hits so it lingers forever and it stays in des so you can continue your des pressure but it is a high so limited in that respect otherwise the other dbt move of note is the jet sidestep which is merely dbt up or down it goes very 
very quickly to the side and has a mid follow up which you do by pressing one and that has a big input window so you have a lot of time to confirm if something whiffed before you actually press the button which is important given that it's punishable but merely being able to move that fast that far to the side is pretty useful so you'll see it a lot SBT can't do this so it's one of the advantages of DBT lastly her down back one backup stance or BKP might be her most useful of these three mini stances there are only four moves one for each button but with the exception of backup two which is a gimmicky unblockable they all have a use and down back one dips her down and back so it has a good amount of evasion so yet another way to create some whiffs backup one is probably the most common move since it's an I-11 high that gives plus four on block and does a huge chunk of damage and can wall splat backup three is a power mid that sends your opponent into a roll from which you can juggle and backup four is a safe big mid knee launcher although with kind of suspect range with both backup three and four they are negative enough on block that you lose your turn but they are big time deterrents for people ducking backup one what's more backup has a couple of auto transitions the most important being from down three backup one is of course one of the ways counter hit down three can juggle but it's also a common follow-up to down three on normal hit since it can't be beat out they have to duck evade or parry it in fact you might recall that down three has a big active window so at tip range you can get as much as plus 17 and yes that of course allows you to get a free backup one follow-up this is almost 50 damage by itself so if you catch a wall it's absurd damage the biggest issue for all these mini stances is that you have some kind of visible startup before a move can come out backup is the quickest in that respect but otherwise you'll have to find ways to freeze your opponent so you can do these your whiff game helps a lot in this regard but so do things like chainsaw pressure which if you can get them to turtle up a bit with that will allow you to use some dbt So in neutral, Elisa's pressure largely comes in an indirect form because her whiff baiting is so good and that forces people to play carefully. So her mixes and block pressure aren't particularly great there. Her tools there are instead meant to annoy. This is not the case when she is in destructive form or DES, particularly after some buffs she's been given as the game has matured. To start, DES thankfully is a simple stance, although a couple of general things to keep in mind. You can block like normal in DES, but blocking takes you out of DES. Your back dash and forward dash, however, are different. Forward dashing simply takes you to DBT, which we already talked about. You can also do this manually as DES forward through plus four, while back dashing does a special flip. It goes very far back and you go airborne, but you cannot block like you can with a normal back dash. Again, you can also do this manually as DES DES back three plus four or DES up back back. You don't have a sidewalk in DES, which is a big deal given how good Elisa's sidewalk is. And instead you have a kind of a crappy sidestep. If you want lateral movement, your best bet is actually DES up three plus four, which is basically a manual version of the DBT sidestep that we already talked about. It's very good given how quick it is and how far it goes. And yes, you can do the mid follow up just as well since it's the same thing. You can't jump in DES, so this is the end of your movement option. Options. A final note on this particular topic, you'll notice that one of the best things about DES is that nearly every move has multiple hits to it, so playing defense against it can be weird thanks to the longer active windows on the moves, and this affects both post-block timings as well as movement timings since your opponent doesn't want to get clipped by a move that is still lingering. This ultimately works in your favor. On that note, if you're looking to stop buttons, DES forward 1 is your fastest move at I-12, plus 11 on hit and keeps them standing, and plus 3 on block although it is a high technically des 402 is your fastest move at i10 but the hitbox goes upwards so it's almost strictly an anti-jump move your down forward one plus two power crush can also be done from des so you have that des up forward one plus two is a low crush option safe mid it launches and the crush is early at frame five it's just very slow although it's typically not needed because of how you will normally go into des des one plus two is a safe homing high so a good option to stop steppers for mixes and pressure, DES down one is the most common low. Five hits total, 24 damage, only negative 12, and it can't be 
parried. It also high crushes, so useful there too. A little slow at I-20, but since so many DES moves hang around that speed, that's actually fine. And much like other DES moves, it pushes them off access, so you can get some goofy situations from it. DS down 2 is slower at I-27, but it does a lot more damage with the chunkier hits. It's also tricky in that the normal version does 4 hits, but you can hold it to add 2 more. If any hit connects, the rest are guaranteed, given your opponent doesn't get pushed too far away, which can happen out in the open. For mids, she has a few safe mid launchers. DES2 is your fastest and has some tricky pushback on block, but otherwise effectively ends your turn at negative 8. DES forward 1 plus 2 is slower, but gives plus 8 on block, so you can still keep attacking. You can also use up forward 1 plus 2 here, but it's your slowest option, so usually most useful for the low crush. DES back to 1 is noteworthy here since it's your fastest mid, it just doesn't launch. Lastly, DES forward 1 is a big part of her pressure game here too, since it's plus 3, so you can essentially loop it and force them to duck or do something about it. And that's really it for your DES options. Rather, the most complicated thing about DES is just getting to it. Down 1 plus 2 is your manual transition, and although you can block during the transition, it's not particularly fast. And DES options are much better when you have advantage beforehand anyway, so the move transitions tend to be better. 1 1 1 plus 2 is probably the most common transition since it's from her 10 frame punisher, so it's really easy to use and safe on block, albeit they can duck it. 3 2 is also a good option, but almost exclusively as a 13 frame punisher since it's negative 12 on block. 4 2 is probably the most common poke for it since it's a safe long range mid and you still get a massive plus 7 on hit. Full crouch down forward 1 plus 2, neutral 1 plus 2 is good as well if you prefer to take your plus frames to DES instead of trying to run a normal full crouch game. Down forward 1 plus 2 is risky but can be decent sometimes given the armor quality and outside of those you have a number of transitions from punishable strings like down back 2 2, back 4 3, and down back 2 4. Just be aware of the risk when you do those. Regardless, just be mindful of the insane pressure that you can put on with DES and how scary things like her jet sidestep can be and you'll see heavy dividends from this stance. Elisa's grab game is average since she only has the normals and two 1 plus 2 grabs, so no true 1 or 2 break, but she does have some quirky features to her grabs. For starters, only her up forward 1 plus 2 doesn't side switch in some way on hit, her normal side switch on break as well, so getting away from the wall shouldn't be too big of a deal. Although her running long distance game can be strong, you typically still want close range Oki, and sadly the only time she gets that is if up forward 1 plus 2 hits at the wall. Up forward 1 plus 2 is also a slower grab, so it's rare that it hits. Her full crouch down back 1 plus 2 grab is a little better in that respect, given that it's an I-11 startup, which is fast for a grab. Unfortunately, without a proper 1 or 2 break, these are all difficult to land. This brings us to the end of part 2. Hopefully this discussion gets your creativity going and helps get you some wins. In part 3, we'll finish the guide off by going over quick referential items like combos and punishers, and then we'll end with a brief character summary. Watch for that here in the next couple of days. And with that, thank you for checking out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe here on YouTube. Also be sure to turn on notifications if you'd like to get alerted as soon as a new vid is uploaded. I also try to stream whenever I can, so the link to Twitch is down in the video description below. You will find Twitter and Facebook links down there too. Lastly, special thanks to our three patrons, Tato, Apples, and Overhaul. That support means a lot. Patreon is definitely the best way to support your favorite content creators, and the more support the channel gets, the more content I can afford to do. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you next time.